my name is Shasta Garcia and I'm the host of Shasta's Journey. This show is all about my path to purpose and along the way I get to meet so many incredible people with stories that can and will teach, heal, or inspire one of you out there. On this episode, I will be interviewing a woman named Cindy McCormick, and she is an author with a story of revival and overcoming and being deceived and uh, truly finding out who she is in Christ. And so I'm so excited for you guys to hear her story, and it's going to teach and inspire one of you guys, and I really encourage you guys to share your stories as well. Uh, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, we recently met uh, through... National Prayer Day. Correct. Yes, uh, and it's it's kind of awesome when you have those events in your life and you get to meet different people. Um, we didn't meet face to face, but she heard about it and she's here now. So it's really exciting that you get to be a part of it. So thanks thank for, for having me. Here. Thank you for being here. Uh, so let's kind of um, would you care to explain just who you are? Um, you're an author, and is there any other things that you do? Um, I'm an author and. Last year, I was called to write a book about my life story and my testimony and, and my journey in discovering who I really was in Christ, mm -hmm. how I had been deceived my entire life, and how God showed me who I was and how that deception happened and how I overcame the bondages in my life. Mm -hmm. I think each and every one of us uh, goes through our own deceiving and our own bondage breaking and you know going through that process of breaking the chains, uh, whatever it may be. I mean... There, there's always something. Right. Uh, so, yeah, like taking it back, uh, your childhood is obviously the start and the foundation of just kind of like, you know, getting you to where you are now. D did you uh, grow up knowing God or? No, not at all. Actually, when I was born, my mother was 15 and my father was 16. So actually, I was a child of children having a child. And um, they divorced when I was three. I didn't know Christ. We didn't go to church. Um, there was no mention of Christ or prayer. It just wasn't in my life until I became much older. Wow. Wow. What, what was that like growing up with parents that were children themselves? It, it was strange because it was like they really didn't know what to do with a child. And, and it's, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents. It's, mm -hmm. it's like they kind of... My brother and I, they just kind of, you know, slept this off on them so they didn't have to care for us. And so, you know, I'm, I'm sure they did the best they could in the circumstance, but it probably wasn't the idea situation to bring up a child in that, Definitely, in yeah. that kind of environment. Well, if you don't mind me asking, are you, are you still in touch with them to this day? Um, yes, my mother, I still have a close relationship. My father, no, I do not have contact with him. Gotcha. Uh, do you have a heart for um, people who, you know, like there's the constantly teenagers who, you know, are getting pregnant. And I mean, do you have a heart for, you know, like reaching out to the age group girl going through it? You know, I think more I have a heart for children who are growing up and and just not feeling that they're worthy or they're important mm -hmm. or that they matter to their parents. Mm -hmm. So my heart m is more in that area. Mm hmm. How do you feel that you've overcame that, um, considering you didn't have the faith at that time in your life? Well, it was interesting. Like I said, I um, grew up without faith in my life. As a result of that, when I was young, five or six years old, I realized that I was attracted to girls in kindergarten. It's just like, I'm attracted to girls. And, and because of that, I always believed that I was born gay. Wow. And and it was so interesting because that was back in the early 60s, and it really, you know, homosexuality really wasn't talked about mm -hmm. back then. But somehow I knew that I must have been born gay, and I don't even know how I knew there were homosexuals. It just <laughs> somehow I knew that, and also somehow I knew that I needed to be quiet about it. So I grew up knowing that's where I thought I came from, and that's that's my bondage and that's what I needed mm -hmm. to hide from everybody. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there um, was anything that kind of led to that point of, you know, identifying with that? Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. I think that a lot of people believe that um, they're molested at a young age and that leads to um, same-sex identity or same-sex attractions. Mm -hmm. um, I was molested, but it wasn't until I was a high school long after 
I had um, experienced same-sex attractions. What I later discovered um, as a Christian is that I truly believed that I was under the bondage of a generational curse. And in the Bible, it says that God places the sins and inequities of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. Mm -hmm. I came from a family that had sexual sin on both sides of my family, both my mother's side and my father's side. And I believe because of that, that I was born under a generational curse, and Satan used that to make me believe that I had been born gay. Wow. And what were some struggles that you had uh, going throughout your childhood and your high school years and kind of leading up to where you are now um, with identifying that you're gay? Yeah, the struggles, oh, it was, like I said, it really wasn't talked about a lot back then, and you feel isolated and you're the only one. Um, and I always had this, this pain I was trying to get rid of, and I was trying to use drugs to get rid of it or alcohol to get rid of it or... I went through a period where I was actually self-mutilating and cutting myself to try to release this intense pain inside that I was trying to to get rid of, and I just didn't find any relief for that. Wow. So there was something missing throughout that whole time. There was there was this great hole in my heart that I just I couldn't fill it. You know, throughout my life I tried to fill it with relationships, with achievements, um, mm -hmm. with um, making a lot of money being successful, everything I tried, nothing would fill that hole that was inside yeah. until I found God. You know, that, that's an amazing testimony in itself because I think all of us, uh, whether somebody is gay or not, we all have um, something that, you know, has punctured a hole in our hearts, you know, that can only be filled by one thing. And how did you come across, you know, feeling your heart and, you know, being whole and complete again? Yeah, it was, a, it was an interesting story. It happened, um, I was probably in my mid-40s, and I had lived my entire adulthood as a lesbian from the age 20 up until the age of 49. And anyway, I was in my mid-40s, and I was back in Texas um, attending a conference, and it was a week-long conference, and I would go to the hotel room in the evenings and surf the TV channels. And one day, or one night, I came across Joyce Myers preaching on, on the TV show, and it's just like, I had always in the past seen preachers, and they were men preachers, and it always seemed like they put themselves up on this pedestal, and it's like I'd, I'd see them on TV, and I'd just turn off. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want to listen to it. But when I saw her, I saw this woman who was being honest about her struggles and honest about her history and teaching that God loved her in spite of everything and God used her and wanted a relationship with her in spite of everything mm -hmm. and it, it just started to open up my mind as like if God could draw her perhaps he's out there wanting to have a relationship with me. Mm -hmm. I think that's a huge misconception that a lot of people um, grab hold of you know within our society um, is that when they start identifying with um, these certain things you know um, being gay or I mean whatever it may be um, you know, the society makes us think that God doesn't love us. But right. that is far from reality, far from the truth. Yeah, and part of my problem was that um, while I was growing up, I, as an adult, I competed in the International Gay Rodeo Association. And when I would go to different competitions, there would be so-called Christians who would be there with their signs and, and yelling and screaming at me, telling me that, you know, I was going to hell. And, and because they were Christians, I related the way that they were interacting with me as to the way that God felt about me, and that wasn't true at all. Mm -hmm. How did you overcome that? I mean, after all those years of dealing with that and, you know, being persecuted uh, by Christians, and now you identify with a Christian, what is that like? Like, how did you go about changing the mindset? Like, I just, I mean, that's like you turning into somebody that hates you. That this, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, but what what I found as a Christian, as a Christian, Jesus gave us two commandments that we're supposed to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind. 
and that we're supposed to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Mm -hmm. They weren't acting as Christians, and I don't even know if they even were Christians. Mm -hmm. They were angry people with signs, mm -hmm. yelling and screaming. But as a Christian, I'm called to love people and yeah. to be respectful to them. And if I'm to share the truth of the word, I'm to share it with respect and love to yeah. that individual. Exactly. Do you believe your experiences... Um I mean, they've obviously made you into who you are, but would you go back and change anything? I, I always wonder that because, like, I think our experiences really shape and mold us and turn us into who we are and kind of guide us into our purpose, you know, of what we're supposed to do. Yeah, that that's a really good question. I I really don't know if I would go back and change anything because I love where I am now. Mm -hmm. And it's like I'm a Christian. I'm in love with God. I know I wasn't born gay, and I found that through, through tr studying the Bible, mm -hmm. reading God's Word, and Him showing it to me. But it's just like, I love where I am, and I don't know, you know, if, if things had changed in my past, or if I had left homosexuality a long time ago, would I be where I am right now? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just, where God wants me, I just know that. Definitely. I know this is going to be a tough question, but um, this is something I see in the society all the time. And um, just with your story, I really want to hear your take on it. Do you believe that being gay is a choice? You know what I believe? I believe that we have temptations in our life, and all of us have temptations in our life because we're all born with a sin nature. Mm -hmm. We're born with a sin nature because of Adam and Eve's sin. Dominion of, of the earth was given to Satan. Therefore, we're born with a sin nature. When we receive salvation through Jesus Christ, we are no longer under the authority of the sin nature, but we're still all subject to temptations. Mm -hmm. Because Satan knows what my weaknesses are, he tempts me with same-sex attractions. Um, they're not as strong as they used to be. I hardly ever experience one anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's like that temptation there, and I don't think I have a choice of what kind of temptation I'm going to be tempted with. Mm -hmm. My choice is, what do I do when I experience that temptation? Do I give God authority over my life, or do I follow Satan? And, the, and that's a choice. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think the choice comes in. We all, whatever our temptation is, we all have that choice. Yeah, that's an excellent point. You know, I've had a lot of people like assume that God's like this puppet master, you know, but we have free will and, but with free will, you know, that comes with temptations and this and that, and right. we really need to be centered. I mean, it's, it's absolutely vital. Uh, I mean, how do you feel that God has turned your experiences um, through all those trials and tribulations that you've been through, mm -hmm. you know, with trying to fill that gap and trying to fill that hole um, into something good, into something pure and, and something that you would like to share with the world? Well, it was funny. This last summer, he called me to write this book, Satan's a Liar, I Wasn't Born This Way. And, and it was just like, I never intended to write a book. I don't consider myself an author, but I really heard it in my spirit. And what I heard in my spirit was God say, the time is now. And when I heard that, I knew immediately he wanted me to write a book. And I thought at first it was just going to be about my testimony. Mm -hmm. And so I spent the summer writing it about my testimony. And when I was done with that, I felt like he kept giving me more and more and more. And so he gave me the biblical principles that I used to gain freedom from the bondage of homosexuality wow. and to be able to share that with people that are experiencing same-sex attractions. But it's also principles that can be used for any type of bondage. And people that read the book a lot of times they come up to me and they say, you know, Cindy, we don't deal with same-sex attraction, but boy, we have this bondage in our life or that bondage in our life. And your book really reminded us what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. I know. It, it's definitely a great reminder. And uh, I think it's just so prevalent. Um, and the time is now. Uh, the time is now. Yeah. I mean, right. but for each and every one of you watching, too, your story has an impact in this world that... Not everybody, like, for instance, like me, my story can't impact, you know, certain people. So it's really important for us to use our experiences that we go through and share it because there's people out there that need to know that they can overcome the circumstances that they're being tempted with, and that they're trying to overcome. I mean, that's, it's important. So how has your faith played a consistent role in you sharing your story? You know, it's funny because 
In Revelation 12, 11, we're told that we defeat Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. And the blood of the Lamb is our salvation through Jesus. But the words of our testimony, it's like they're so powerful and they're so freeing. And Satan wants to keep us ashamed of it and in darkness. And anything that we bring out into the light, mm -hmm. we just gain so much power and so much freedom and, and so much strength from God. It's like he wants us to share what we've been through so other people know that it's possible. Mm -hmm. it, it's, and it is possible. It's completely possible. I know we didn't really touch completely base on this, but so when you became a uh, Christian, was it just like automatic? Like, what was the process of no, you, it, like, finding out? It wasn't. It, it was a, a long process, actually, over several years. And it's like when I became a Christian, I was under the assumption that um, I would no longer experience same-sex attraction. Mm. It's like I was under this false assumption. And when I first became a Christian and I still experienced it, it was it was kind of defeating. It was like, why am I still experiencing this? I knew as a Christian, when I became one, I never wanted to go back to that lifestyle. And I was free from that, but I was still having these temptations. And so it's like took several years for me dealing with the temptations and turning to God and searching the Bible and talking to friends and finding about generational curses and was like, well, I really wasn't born gay. That's why I, I feel this at such a young age, and that's why I continue to feel this. It's like, it's a curse. <laughs> it's a family curse. Hmm. And so it, it was a process, and it was over several years. But at the end, it's like I was able to turn to the Bible and find the principles that are there that gives us freedom from any bondage. Mm -hmm. And through God, we can do anything. Yeah, it's definitely interesting how you look at it, for sure. Um, I know that there is so many people within this world that are dealing with so many different bondages. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, being gay could definitely, you know, be one of them. But um, just for anybody struggling um, with any type of bondage, what advice do you have for somebody um, to be able to get throughout that? Because I know you discussed this throughout your book, but um, just to give people kind of a taste of, you know, like, this is what you can do to overcome yeah, it. Yeah, um, the very first principle is our salvation through Jesus Christ. And like I said, because we're born into a world with a sin nature, we need to receive Jesus as our Savior to gain authority over that sin nature. I think the second most important thing for me was learning to control my thought life. It's mm -hmm. like whatever we think about grows in our mind, mm -hmm. and we have control of what we focus on. We might not think we do, but we really do, mm -hmm. and we need to stop and start thinking about what we're thinking about. And are we thinking about godly things? Are we not thinking about godly things? And if we're not thinking about godly things, we need to stop and start thinking about godly things. Mm -hmm. We need to renew our mind reading the Word, knowing what God says, getting it in our heart, um, going to church, creating relationships with other Christians, being involved in Bible studies, be mindful about what we listen to. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like Satan knows how to use music to to try to get to us. He was a worship leader in heaven before he was cast down. He's very proficient at using music for that. He's proficient at using a lot of yes, things. Yes, <laughs> he is. He is. Uh, but as far as your story, how do you feel um, that God is using it? I mean, I know, I know you wrote a, um, a book, but like, what other opportunities has God put in your life for you to be able to share your testimony and share your story to impact others? Um, just, just reaching out to people with the book, and it, it's interesting in doing that, is that because I'm honest in the book about my struggles and my past, mm -hmm. that people who have been through things feel freed to be able to come up to me and approach me and say, hey, you know, this happened in my past, and I can see you spent 29 years in this kind of bondage and you made it through. I can make it through. Mm -hmm. What has been one interaction or encounter with somebody who has read your book that completely gave you just confirmation, like, this is exactly what I was supposed to do? You know, that's, that's come a, a couple different ways. And, and the one thing that um, one thing I can mention is about the generational curses. That's like 
I had never read anywhere that one possible reason to believe that you were born gay is because of generational curse. It's like it just, that's what God gave me, that's what I wrote in the book. But later, after I had written it, I had seen where there is a minister on TV who is also asserting the same thing. Mm. And so it was confirmation that God had mm. given me what he had given him. Mm -hmm. And then we had another preacher come to our church and preach, and I felt like he was preaching my book. Wow. It's like everything he was saying was, was things that I had written in the book about the sin nature and, and Satan and how we're to overcome it and biblical principles we're supposed to use. And it was just like I wanted to stand up and shout and throw my arms up in the air. You know, it's so hard to just stay seated there. But it was a confirmation. Yes, mm -hmm. Cindy, it was from God. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely incredible. What do you want people to get from the book and just from your story in a whole? You know, I think what I would really like people to get is that no matter how old you are, no matter where you've been, no matter where you currently are, God loves you so much, and He just desires an intimate relationship with you, and that He'll forget everything. We need to repent, but He'll forget everything, and he'll, He's just waiting there with open arms mm -hmm. if we just turn and let Him know that. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you have a huge heart cry uh, for people with bondages. It yes, definitely I... is. What are some other bondages that you um, would consider bondages and like how you've overcame them? Um, well, growing up, um, I was drinking alcohol. And so, like I said, that was to numb the pain. Mm -hmm. And to overcome that, I didn't have Christ in my life. But I... I was able to, and I think God, even though I wasn't a Christian, God brought me through it because if I would have stayed there, how could he have used me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And for those out there who are struggling with identity, um, I, I mean, whatever it may be, uh, you know, within this generation, within our society, we are constantly bombarded with um, stereotypes and um, different ways we should identify ourselves. And um, I, I mean, there's just so many things now. I mean, it's been crazy over the last few years. You know, now we got transgender and um, I mean, just there's just a huge range of it. So I mean, what do you have to say for the people who are struggling with their identity? I'm saying that God made you in his likeness, mm -hmm. wonderfully made with care and love and that he is not the author of confusion. Mm. Satan is the author of confusion. Mm. Satan came to kill, steal, and destroy, and that's his plan, to get us out of God's will for our life. And any way he can do that, whether it be confusion about your identity, whether it be addictions, mm -hmm. whatever he can use, he will use to do that. Mm -hmm. And that if you're experiencing confusion, know that God didn't make you that way. And it's not from God that you're experiencing the confusion from. Definitely. And I, I think the important thing to point out as well is that um, sometimes there's a misconception when you give your life to God, everything completely changes. You have no more trials and tribulations, no more temptations, nothing at all. Like, I mean, crystal clear, perfect little world. What, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> yes, I was under that assumption. And I think sometimes the church doesn't do a very good job with that, explaining people. It's like once we become Christians, we aren't free from temptation. We're attacked even more. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a target on your back now because you're doing things for God. Mm -hmm. And that just doesn't please Satan at all. Mm -hmm. So it's like, no, once you become a Christian, the thing to know is that at least God is on our side. He'll walk through us with anything we're going through. He tells us he will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear. He also tells us with every temptation, he will provide an escape. Mm -hmm. So we know we might have temptations and we might have struggles, but we're not struggling it alone anymore. Mm -hmm. We're struggling it with the one who created earth and the one who created us and the one who knows how to get us through that struggle. Mm -hmm. He'll never forsake us nor leave us. <laughs> and... While you were talking, I was thinking, what are your escape routes? Just out of curiosity, like, like how do you escape temptation, you know? Um, I mean, whether that's something you see, something you hear, something you think, 
Yeah, yeah. Like I said, um, my biggest thing was mine was controlling my thoughts and mm -hmm. thinking about what I'm thinking about. It's like if I if I experience a same sex attraction, if I sit there and think about the object of my attraction all day long, it's not going to help me. That just makes it worse. Mm -hmm. It's like I need to control those thoughts and keep them in the order of God's word and keep them under his authority. Mm -hmm. um, sight, yeah, be careful what you look at. If something tempts you, turn away. Don't take a second glance. Listening, music that you listen to. You know, there's, there's old music that I'd listen to, and it would take me right back. As soon as I'd hear it, I'd go in my mind right mm -hmm. back to the person I was with when I when I used to listen to it or what I was doing when I used to listen mm -hmm. to it. So the, there's a lot of things that we can do that are under our control if we really pay attention to what's going on in our life and not go through an automatic pilot mm -hmm. that, that are there. And it's in the Bible that tells us how to use them. Yeah. I, I think your story is um, really authentic and it's not only vital um, for people who are dealing with bondage, um, but also Christians and you know, faithful people to know that there are going to be those things that people identify with that this, you know, our society makes a huge deal out of. And, you know, it's our job to love. Um, and and I, I think that's a huge part of your story. I, I really do. Um, just like from just talking with you, I mean, it's, it's extremely vital. So what advice do you have um, for Christians? Um, because I don't feel like... Um, us within our religion, we've really been taught how to, you know, manage how to deal with those types of things. Mm -hmm. Well, anytime we approach anybody, we need to do it in love and with respect. And, and if I'm bringing a sin to your attention, I'm doing it because you're my friend and I love you and I don't want you to spend eternity somewhere where it's not going to be a good place to spend eternity. I'm doing it out of love because I don't want to see you go to hell. I want to see you spend an eternity with God in love and peace. And my concern is for you and your well-being. Mm -hmm. Well, with that being said, we only have about a minute left, um, but how can people go ahead and contact you um, so they can see your book and hear more about your story and get in touch with you um, if you guys were taught, healed, or inspired? Sure. Um, the book is available at my website. It's returnhome.today. It's also available on Amazon, um, Kindle. It's also available at some bookstores. So, and they can contact me through the website. There's mm -hmm. more information on the website about same-sex attractions and biblical principles. Perfect. That's wonderful. And thank you so much for reaching out to me um, over the course of you know these last few weeks and uh, making it happen. So thank you for being a part of my path to purpose. It means a lot. And thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it. Please go ahead and share your stories at ShastasJourney.com or our Facebook page. And also you can watch old episodes and new episodes on our YouTube page at Shasta's Journey. I'm leaving for Mexico for three months, but I will be back. So I will see you guys soon. Stay in touch. And I hope you guys were taught, healed, or inspired. Bye-bye.